All right, so today we're going to talk about the method of undetermined coefficients for higher order differential equations. So here's our first example. We have a seventh order non-homogeneous differential equation. So to find the form of the particular solution, first we need to solve the homogeneous case. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to, so the question for this problem is to find the form of the particular solution. So we want to go ahead and um, find the homogeneous solution first. So let's do that. So we are looking for y sub h. So we're going to set the equation equal to zero. So we have y to the seventh derivative minus seven, y to the fifth derivative minus 18, y to the third derivative equals to zero. So now we go ahead and write out the characteristic polynomial. So we have r to the seventh power minus seven r to the fifth minus 18 r to the third equals to zero. And then we um, use factoring to find the roots of this polynomial. So we have cube times r to the fourth minus seven r square minus 18 equals to zero. And then the parentheses portion can be factored a little bit more. So we still have our cube outside and then we can factor the inside with r square minus nine and then r square plus two. So that way, uh, this can be factored a little bit more. That would be r plus three and then r minus three. And we still have our cube and we have r squared plus two equals to zero. So that will give us all the roots. So from this one, if we set it to zero, our cube equal to zero will give us r equals zero. So we have three repeated roots from this one. So we can say r1, r2, and r3 are going to be zero. So those are the repeated roots with zero. And then we can say, for instance, if we set this one to zero, we get r4, let's call it equals to negative three. And then if we set this one to zero, we have r5 equals to three. And then if we set this one to zero, we get say r squared is equal to negative two and then take the square roots, you get complex roots. So we have r4, sorry, not r4, r6, and R7, which are complex conjugate of plus and minus square root of 2i. So 6 and R6 and R7 are complex conjugate. So now we're ready to write down the homogeneous solution to this equation. So these are the roots. So we have from the first R1, R2, R3, our solution, it's going to be c1 e to the zero which is one plus c2 now to make them too distinct we multiply it by t plus c3 now make this one distinct from the previous two we multiply with t square so these are the three coming from r1 r2 and r3 now with r4 we have real root so that's going to be uh, c4 e to the negative 3t and then C5 coming from R5, that's e to the 3t. And then the last two are gonna be complex conjugate where uh, beta is square root of two. So we have plus C6 cosine of a square root of 2t plus C7 sine of a square root of 2t. So there we have our homogeneous solution. Well, now we have to figure out what could be the possible form of the particular solution based on the non-homogeneous equation. So we look at the right-hand side of this equation. So we need a form for this piece, we need a form for this one, and we need a form for that one. 
So let's go ahead and label these. What are those different forms we're going to be using? So let's call this particular solution form one, particular solution form two, particular solution form three. And then we'll try to use our homogeneous case in there. So yp1 is a constant term, negative five. So it's a polynomial of degree zero. So let's call it a constant. So yp1 has to be just a constant, so that's A. Now, we wanna make this one independent of the homogeneous case, so it looks like it's gonna duplicate with this one. If I multiply by T, then there's a duplication here. If I multiply by T squared, there's a duplication here. So, so that we don't overlap with the homogeneous, I must multiply this function with T cubed. That way there are no duplication in the homogeneous with the particular solution form. So that will be the form for the first particular function. Now what about for yp2? So let's take a look at what yp2 was. So yp2 is it's a linear times the exponential 3t. So we need a linear and the exponential 3t. So we need a linear, so that would be, let's call it bt plus c and the exponential e to the 3t. Well, now let's check, does this have a duplicate in the homogeneous? If I distribute this, my function that I'm guessing is pretty much bt e to the 3t plus c e to the 3t. That's what I'm guessing. Now it looks like this one has a duplication right here. It's exactly the same except for the constant, which is not a big deal. So that means I must modify this guess by multiplying it by some t to some power. So it looks like if I multiply this by t, that will remove the duplication. So we're good to go with yp2. So my yp2 would be this function times t, and then that'll remove the duplication. And the last function we're looking at is yp3. So let's check what yp3 we're guessing. It's sine a square root of 2t. Okay, so for sine and cosine, you need both sine and cosine. So I'm going to guess my form is d cosine of square root of 2t plus e sine of a square root of 2t. That's my guess for this particular form. Now I need to check, is there any duplication of this in the homogeneous part? Well, there is, both of them right here. They both appear to be there. So I need to remove the duplication. So I'm gonna modify this by multiplying it by simply T because that will do the job. And now they're all different. So where we have our particular solution form. So our particular solution form, it's going to be the sum of yp1, yp2, and yp3. So yp is going to be a t cubed plus um, b t square e to the 3t plus c t e to the 3t and yp3 that will be plus dt cosine of a square root of 2t plus e t sine of square root of 2t. So that would be my form of the particular solution for this given non-homogeneous differential equation. All right, so um, I hope this makes sense. Until next time.